So when did you like kind of like, I guess, decide to get into more of the photography type of stuff? Because like a lot of your shots, are they like drone shots you're taking of different courses? Yeah. So I, like I said, I got my first, um, I, I shoot on a Canon R6. Mm-hmm. I got picked that up last Christmas. And this past April, I just passed my um, Part 107 FAA drone license certification. Mm-hmm. And then I picked up a drone um, in June. So now it's after I play around, I'll just let the pro shop know. I'll be like, hey, I'm going to throw a drone up and just get some shots and and maybe for like 10 or 15 minutes, just fly it over the course and just yeah. see what I can get. Cool. And it's it, it's something like, like I know the basics of photography. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, we all have the, the Instagram golf community is fantastic. And there are some really great golf course photographers out there. And like, I just kind of try to think of a shot that they would do. So like a guy like Lynch jams or, um, there's a guy, Jeff Marsh. Um, he does a lot of like PGA tour stuff. Uh, Ryan or RJ Gilbert is one of my favorites. Cause he likes to shoot a lot of black and white stuff and, and black and white and golf and landscape is just takes it to a whole different level. You can see a lot yeah. more. So like, I just kind of try to, I guess, mimic what they do at least try to think of how would they get this shot from this angle or you know if you're 150 yards out of a hole how can you make 150 or 150 yards um look like 50 or 75 yeah. or even 25 like how do you do that just by standing in one spot mm-hmm. but it's now become like something that like now i want to learn more about like how to be a photo like a still photographer yeah exactly yeah and i think like the drone stuff is so cool that's something that's always like been of interest to me we don't have one at the studio because mostly we're doing music stuff um and so like you know we've got dslrs and and just different use a lot of cameras on sliders but uh the the drone stuff like we tried to i'm sure you've seen those uh shots where they'll do the first one i ever saw was like a bowling alley and they like took it down the lane and it was like all one shot we kind of recreated one in the studio just with you know a dslr going through but it was like around like the drum kit while they were tracking and then into the control room and stuff like that just Ugh. with a, a handheld but it was it was so fun to record it and then go back and do like the post-production to make it sound like you know a conversation here and the drums were moving around your head as it because yeah the whole I, i'm sure you well you i don't know with tv so much but obviously a lot of the video you know shows and movies are moving into atmos and that's really getting it's so much more of a demand on the audio side of that video post-production. And we've really been playing around with that a lot more just locally yeah. here in, in Syracuse. And it's, it's crazy what you can do. This, this main studio here that kind of shares the facility with us at Subcat, they're called Studio Central and their theater, it's hundred feet, the, hundred seat theater. And there's 27 points of audio all the way around. And it's just fully immersive. And it's, it's incredible because there's, there's not any place like that kind of in New York City because, you know, property, they, they can't have the right height and size room. And so luckily in here in Syracuse, that's kind of like the big push to get these yeah. film producers, directors up here and, and finish a film in Atmos as Atmos just continues to grow more and more. It's it's amazing what goes into the audio, like the audio side of things. And, and especially when it comes to video, how to, I guess, like emphasize the sound. Mm-hmm. You know, like working in TV news, um, some of what, like for when I, one of my things was I always like to have a lot of sound. I wanted to like have as much sound in, in a news story as possible. So I yeah. would like just mic somebody up and be a fly on the wall and be like 100 feet away. And as soon as I heard the, the one little s- nugget or sound bite that I wanted, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go move the mic. Or um, I like to always like, bring the viewer in to where the sound was so mm-hmm. like if i needed a shot of like a tight shot of running water i would put a little lavalier mic right next to the water just to have that blast of yeah. water cool i always went with the fi- i always went with like fireworks like if you heard fireworks to your left you would always look left or a clap like you would look where the clap was or yeah exactly. um, when i would edit audio i would like keyframe a lot of stuff mm-hmm. and i would think of like a train like the train's coming right 
to left, it's quietest all the way. And as soon as it's right in the middle, it's as loud as it could be and then yeah. trails off. Sound is, yeah. I think, the most important element in film, you know, any kind of production. You need great audio and great sounding, clear sound to really make something stand out. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunately being in, you know, uh, obviously like the film stuff is growing here. So working with a lot of beginning and small budget producers, directors, they're constantly overlooking somebody on set to have sound captured. And the biggest thing that we deal with is just scratchy lobs or, you know, those generators or fans running and nobody thought to <laughs> turn them off. And it's yeah the amount of denoising and audio cleanup that we do for a bunch of this stuff is just remarkable. And and it, it's amazing. it's only at those it, those kind of beginning levels. And then as you get up, you know, they've got multiple sound mixers right on set. But it's amazing what you could do in post now if you need like to to knock audio out, like some background noise. Yeah. You know, you could run it right through an AI AI gen generator and that sound is gone. Yeah, those I mean the isotope stuff is phenomenal. I mean that's what I all these podcasts we run through and it doesn't matter, you know, there's some of the, the guests, you know, are on like a cell phone and it can make them sound just phenomenal nowadays. It's yeah. Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at basic bogeys on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.